I want our frontline workers to know reinforcements are coming. We, we cannot continue understaffing our hospitals and then forcing our, our frontline workers to work mandatory overtime and be called in on, on days off and have to cancel their holidays. That's been the situation for the last two and a half years. And a, a lot of that problem was created by policies at Alberta Health Services of having mandatory vaccinations. So it prevented us from being able to hire back everyone who had been let go up until about two and a half months ago when cabinet directed them to end the mandate, prevented us from being able to graduate students across the full range of professions because they also had vaccine mandates. It prevented us from being able to hire from other jurisdictions uh, through the full range of people who would have otherwise wanted to come here because of vaccine mandates. So they actually, at the management level, made things even worse for our front line. And when you see that kind of poor management, especially since the premier gave them direct instruction I remember this very clearly because everyone said, okay, well, if this is about saving the healthcare system, let's give them the time, let's give them the money and let's let them do it. He gave them direct instruction to increase surge capacity by 1,100 beds. And then when the Delta variant came along, they admitted they hadn't done that, that they had reduced surge capacity. So this is a management problem. It is not a problem with our frontline workers. Our frontline workers need to be supported. And when it happens in a in a business, when they fail to meet targets and they fail to meet direction, you change the management. And so that's what we're going to do. We're, we're going to change the management. Once we have the, a task force established to go and visit every facility, one of the things that you hear on the campaign trail is the number of acute care beds that are uh, filled by patients who are waiting placement in long-term care. And part of what happens is a person gets into some distress and then they come into hospital and they're too sick to go back to their home, but not really sick enough to be in hospital. But because of the system we have of moving patients into long-term care, they can be waiting for months or longer. We, um, I've spoken to the Continuing Care Association. They have 20 to 30% vacancy in their long-term care facilities, which is about 1,000 beds. So if there was a way for us to work with them to collaboratively move 500 patients patients from Calgary and Edmonton to create the room in our main hospitals in Calgary and Edmonton, that I think would do uh, make an immediate effect of taking the pressure off. And then we would continue to work slowly over time to make sure that those patients are in a more appropriate facility.